Today we're doing a beer brine chicken in this Big Easy Oilless Fryer. Now brining always adds moisture to chicken. Anytime I'm doing a whole chicken, I almost always brine it. Now the beer in this brine, not, not only you know does the brine give it moisture, but the beer has tenderizing tendencies. It's going to make this chicken great. I hope you stay with me. So I've got 32 ounces of water here. Okay. We've got one cup of kosher salt, half a cup of brown sugar. All right. Here, I've got eight ounces, one cup of orange juice. Right. Now you just want to make sure the salt and brown sugar get dissolved. And then once your sugar is dissolved, we can start adding the beer, right? Now, I'm using Blue Moon, a white Belgian. Uh, you know, use whatever you want. I would not use an IPA unless you're looking for a hoppy chicken. Um, I, I like to use a, a Belgian. Uh, I've used Trippels. They're a little bit more expensive, but that nice orange flavor, you know, that they have in them, it's awesome. But these Belgian whites do a great job, okay? Now, I don't know if I'm going to need all that one. It wasn't careful. It's foamed up a little bit. And then I've just got some cloves here. I don't know. Maybe 20. Okay, maybe. I don't know for sure. I've got a chicken where I've removed all that giblet stuff. Oh, okay. As soon as the foam settles down, you won't have this problem. Okay. And I'm just going to let this sit here a minute. You know, I, I've had to be more careful the beer wouldn't foam. But the foam will obviously settle, and then we'll see if we need to add any more before we move this to the fridge. So I've been letting this sit here about 10 minutes. There's my chicken. I don't know how well you can see that. You can see the foam's gone down. Look, I don't want to waste this blue moon. So I'm just going to pour the rest of it in there. So we had a total of four blue moons, and then I just got a little bit more water here. Okay, we probably can get by with what we have. But uh, just pour a little bit more in there. All right, and that's a total of another 16 ounces. So I'll put all these measurements that I use down in the uh, description box. Now, all I'm going to do is put cover this up and put it in the fridge, and we'll pick this back up tomorrow. So the next day, our chicken's been brining 24 hours. Uh, and it's right at 24 hours. Um, in that uh, beer brine we made, all right? Yeah, all I'm gonna do is pull this guy out. I'm gonna get some paper towels and dry this bird off. And then we're gonna do something a little bit different uh, than what we usually do when we cook with this Big Easy. Um, and I'm hoping that it'll give us even a crispier skin than what you usually get. So we've got this chicken all dried off. What I've got here is some duck fat. Uh, we actually made a duck uh, last weekend. Um, now you can buy duck fat, right? Uh, I think we bought some from Amazon. It's a little more expensive than other oils. But the, if you haven't cooked with it, the real advantage um, is everything I've read at least. I'm still learning how to use it. I'm no expert. But you're supposed to get a little crispier skin when you use duck fat oil uh, on stuff that you make. So, just got him oiled up. Now, let me just get something to dry the oil, get the oil off my hand. Okay. Okay, to season this guy, we're gonna keep it simple. I've got some dried rosemary. Just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that. And you can see that oil helps it stick really nicely, right? So we got a little rosemary. Then I'm going to come in with some coarse black pepper, just a light layer you can see. I mean, we're certainly not going to even put probably not even a teaspoon of each of these seasonings on the chicken. And then here what I've got, I've got some saffron salt. Look, you don't have to have saffron salt, right? I got this for Christmas from my son. And... Um, and you're not supposed to be able to get the lid off, I guess. Oh, there we go. 
So I want to use it, right? If you don't have this, just use some kosher salt. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's got a nice yellow uh, uh, color to it. Just going to sprinkle a little bit of this on here. You know, I've got it, why not use it? But like I say, you can just use kosher salt. I certainly wouldn't recommend you go out and buy saffron salt just for this recipe. Okay. Now, we're just going to turn this chicken over, season this side, and then one more step before we get it into the Big Easy. So, we've got it all seasoned up. I'm just going to take some butcher twine here. You, you don't have to do this. It just makes it a le little easier to manage as you're putting it in and taking it out of the Big Easy. But I have cooked many, many chickens uh, and not tied it up, all right? So you don't have to do that. No, oh, by the way, um, I, I just tie knots, right? I know a lot of you folks know those fancy uh, knots, and maybe I should learn that someday. Uh, but I just tie it in a knot and move on, okay? So you can see I got that one. And then the only other thing I'm going to do is run a piece around these wings. Uh, just to keep them from flopping around. Again, you don't have to do this. In fact, if you watch some of my Big Easy recipes, you'll see I, I don't tie them down. Uh, but I have noticed sometimes when I'm getting it out of the basket, uh, it's, you know, you just have to wiggle it a little bit. Uh, but I wouldn't worry too much about it if you don't have the twine. All right, now, I got my uh, Big Easy basket here. It's already got the duck fat on it, right? So I'm not going to spray this down with Pam like I usually do. Just going to sit this guy like so. Get our chicken in there, and now let's get over to the Big Easy. So we're just going to get our chicken in here. Um, I've got people ask all the time, what temperature do you have it on? It's turned the knob is turned all the way up. The, my particular model Big Easy doesn't have you know any kind of temperature gauge or anything. I got the propane knob turned all the way up. I'm not going to use the lid. It's probably 65, 66 here in Florida today, and I don't want the outside to get too done. We'll check on it as we progress through the cook, and you know, if we want the skin a little darker later, we can add the lid then. But in my experience, if you put that lid on when it's this warm at the beginning of the cook, the outside of the chicken will get way overdone before the inside's ready. So we'll check back in an hour, hour and a half to see how this chicken's coming along. It's been one hour. This chicken, I've uh, put a probe in it. It's 158, right? We want another, uh, and this is in the thigh. So we want an, another, uh, on, on the thigh, right, I want it to be uh, uh, 168, 170, I mean some folks say 175, but the point is I just want to show you uh, what it looks like. You can see it's got some nice color there, right, but if you want it a little darker at this point, now is a good time to put the lid on it. Just keep an eye. I am going to put the lid on, like I say, I'm going to bring it up maybe seven to ten degrees more I'll decide as we cook through it we'll check back in about I don't know probably about 20 minutes it's been a total cook time now of one and a half hours I pulled this chicken out after uh, you know uh, at the last check-in 15 minutes later and moved the probe down into the breast and realized that it wasn't as far along as I thought it was no problem we just cooked it a little longer. Well, I guess I don't need that top anyway, huh? But I got to tell you, you have to look at this chicken. It is gorgeous. Can you see that golden color? Everywhere I probed this chicken, it's 164, 163, 165. We're just going to let it rest here 10 minutes. You know, this basket's hot. It'll come on up a degree or two. Chicken's been resting here about 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to get this guy out of here. All right, let me just get this basket up. It's all cooled down where we can handle it. All right, set this here, get this out of the way. All right, I gotta tell you, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous bird. Just look at that. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is get this little string off that we had on there. Oh my gosh. Can you hear that? Yeah, you probably can't. I can hear it. We got some nice crispy skin. Chicken's been resting here 10 minutes. Now look, they're coming out of the woodwork wanting to taste the chicken. Nobody, it smells so good. Nobody help me. Okay, so we did the old uh, Blue Moon White Belgian beer brine. 
what I've got here, it's just, you know, a little uh, Alabama white sauce on the side. It's got nothing to do with the video. I like Alabama white sauce. Just look at this. It's crunchy. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is crunchy. Okay, I'm going to try to cut so that they can see it. It's oh kind of hard for me to cut backwards, but what the heck. Sorry if you're getting an elbow shot or a hand shot, whatever. I'm not trying to, but just trying oh my to heck, it's so juicy. get it out. It's poppy. Poppy. <laughs> There's what she looks like. I hope you can see that. It smells so good. Nice you have and juicy. It. <laughs> Look at the skin on it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. Yum. So let me do this. Let me move this over. And you saw we went, you know, very simple seasoning. Okay. And I guess you're going to want to have this first bite. I'll let you have that with the skin on Yay. it. Okay. Do you want dipping sauce for yeah. your first bite? Yes? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give you the dipping sauce. Look at all the juice on this. Oh, I don't know if you can pick it up in the video. It's getting a little late here. Really excited. There's juice everywhere from this chicken. There's a dipping sauce. I'm going to try it first without the dipping sauce. Boy, it is juicy. Cheers. Cheers, Amundo. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back or anything, but you can just tell everybody how juicy this chicken is. This is my favorite <laughs> chicken he's ever made. Oh my gosh, you did so good. It's got a very, very, very faint sweetness to it. Wow. Um, and a lot that. of that is from that uh, Belgian wheat beer. Look, for those of you who don't, aren't beer cow. drinkers, it, I don't think it tastes like beer to you. No, it doesn't taste like beer at all. No, what you get is a little sweetness from it's that so Belgian delicious. white. I'm going to try the sauce. This is best, best, might be one of the best chickens I've ever made. No sauce. Skin, it is so delicious. Skin came out perfect. You saw how easy this recipe was. Thanks for watching another one of our videos. If you're not a subscriber already, I hope you hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. You'll Do be notified. Recipe, it's the very best one he's <laughs> ever done. This is delicious. You really did good. And nutritious.